Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Hey guys, Rosie here. I just want to say I am so grateful that you're listening. We are just getting a massive amount of response on this podcast, and I am so grateful that you're a part of this radically loved community, that you're enjoying the content and that you're enjoying all the guests and that you're still here and you're still working on yourself and your journey and your path. And I pray that you've received some tools listening to the guests or listening to any of my ideas or topics on meditation or yoga and how these tools can help you create a life of purpose to continue to help us give you the best content, you can subscribe to this podcast. And most of the time you can just do it from your phone, from iTunes, click subscribe and write a review. This really helps us continue this path and this journey. And we love doing it so much. And again, I'm so grateful that you're here. Let us know what you thought. Thanks for listening. Andrea. I am so excited to have you on the show, not only because I'm a fan of your podcast, uh, but because I'm a big fan of you and what you're doing in the world and what your background is and what your approach is and basically just you as a whole. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here, Rosie. So for the people that are tuning in, um, just if you can tell us just a little bit about yourself and what you do and what your story is. Yeah. Um, okay. So I have been training, I guess I've been in the fitness world for about the last 10 years. Um, really the last 16 years. Um, cause I started when I was 16 and, um, in the last few years, I've really gravitated towards the yoga side and then um, the Ayurveda side of fitness. So that's something that's kind of been sprinkling in my journey. Um, To really, I guess, back up, I guess my journey really came into play this last about 14 months ago um, when my son was born. So I've always worked with moms in the past. And since becoming a mom, it has totally transformed everything that I used to think and used to tell these moms you know, you can fit in, you can make the time and all of these things that I was, you know, I thought I was helping. Mm. It was not, helping. you know, like, you're just like, I have no idea. Cause I don't, I didn't have a child at the time. Right. And now I'm like, oh yeah, I totally get this. And like the whole after birth experience and, um, it's different for everyone, the birthing process, what you need to be doing, you know, to actually give birth, like to get kind of like, I don't want to say in shape, but like the, you know, for the labor and the pushing and all that requires. And some people don't need to be doing a bazillion Kegels where um, I just assumed everyone had to. And learning all of this firsthand, that's kind of my new passion is helping women, you know, discover who they are and accept their identity evolution basically after becoming a mom. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, we, so to give people a little bit of background, we met at Lori Harder's Bliss Project in LA, uh, just, I want to see a few months ago, but it's, yeah. it's only been like a month, right? I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know it just feels like a lifetime ago. And we, we're in a group together and we just really hit it off. We had a great group that we, we were with and I just really resonated not only obviously having the same yoga and Ayurvedic background, um, but just with your story and your ethos and, and what you're doing in the world. So I, I wanted to talk to you about how, your yoga practice and how Ayurveda has really changed your life and how you utilize it now to work with your clients. Yeah, that 
Um, since having my son, I actually just discovered this in the past couple weeks. There is Ayurveda, like birth doulas postpartum, which what? I didn't even know. Yeah. You didn't know that. I either. had yeah. no idea. I'm like, what? No, that's I know, so I cool. That. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I kind of looked into it a little bit and, um, everything I was reading, I was like, this is something I'm super passionate about, like, and bringing this to, you know, the women and basically in it, it said those first 42 days, um, after giving birth in Ayurveda, which is basically the first six weeks, you're really supposed to be, you know, connected to your child, um, having your support system, building that support system around you. So people coming in, maybe helping with light chores around the house, you know, helping prepare nourishing meals and not maybe just that, you know, big baked lasagna or whatever people are bringing in that our bodies can't digest yet. And all of these helpful things that I'm like, this is what I needed after giving birth to my son that I didn't even know. Cause I think that is something that is missing and that Ayurveda provides. And so that has been kind of a new passion is I want to incorporate some of that into my practices. Cause I work with a lot of moms who are pregnant and, mm-hmm. you know, having this and giving that tool to them and helping them set up this kind of support system after birth. Cause a lot of the times after you have a child, Um, you know, while you go to the doctors, you give these pamphlets, like every trimester, you get a new pamphlet. Here's what's happening. Here's what's happening with your baby. And, um, after giving birth, you don't get a pamphlet, like for yourself, like here's how you should be recovering. Like you get nothing, you know, basically you go to the doctor at the six week checkup. They look at you, they're like, great, you're good. Go work out. You're you're back in the world. And so a lot of the women, if they don't have any training, when you say go work out, you think in your head, okay, just do what I did before I was pregnant because you have no knowledge or, you know, well, how should you, because they don't give you anything or any tools to do. So then that's when women end up with, you know, I personally will share my story in a second, but, um, you know, you can have prolapse uteruses. Um, you're going to have a little bit more damaging. Some people have tears that go undiagnosed, mm-hmm. um, and you can end up with diastasis recti and all of this stuff that, you didn't know was possible to give yourself after giving birth, but because you pushed it too fast. So one of the things that I ended up with is I had an undiagnosed glute tear for, it really didn't show up probably until about six weeks postpartum. So after I've already went to the doctor and then all of a sudden I was having issues uh, going to the bathroom. So going number two, like after I would go to the bathroom, I would come out of the bathroom and have to like lay on the floor and I would be down and out like crying for like five to 10 minutes because it hurt so bad. And like, I was like, this feels like giving birth all over, you know, on a daily basis right now. Mm. So, um, you know, I went into my doctor and I didn't give birth at the hospital. I was supposed to give birth at because they were full when I called, which is its own thing and (laughs) its own little issue. Cause so she doesn't have my records. They didn't like write down how, like what degree of tear I had or any of that. No. And when they told me after I given birth, but if anyone's given birth, like I have no idea. I cannot remember. I think they said two or three, maybe it was a four. My husband has no idea what any of that meant. So when they told him, like, it means nothing to him. He's like, okay, it sounds good. You know, my son's here. So, okay. You know? And so Mm -hmm. I'm like, I have no information to give to this woman. And she's kind of frantically checking the system. No idea, you know? And so that was where we were kind of like, okay, well, this is what I think is going on. So I kind of went back into, okay, I need to really tune in and listen to my body. What's, what's happening. So I kind of intuitively knew, okay, I need to stop doing squats. I need to stop even doing a lot of walking at an incline. And that kind of helped me repair and myself recover. Otherwise my doctor, I went to her probably four times. So, you know, over the course of the next three months, I still was going to her and she was at her like exhausted resources. Like, she's like, this is all I have for you. I'm going to have to send you, you know, to the next person up mm-hmm. at this point if it doesn't you know, all of that stuff that people don't talk about or share and you know that to me I was like does this happen to anyone else or am I the only person that's went through this you know and then talking to some of my clients they're like wow like I didn't know that you had that going on plus mentally I was so not myself you know those first few I would say the first three months I was like I was living in a fog and I didn't really know who I was anymore And um, again, that's where the Ayurveda actually preps you for that because there is an identity evolution. Like you're never going to become that same person that you were before because you are a mother, you have someone to take care of. But I know we kind of think that, but until it really happens, you're like, oh, like my life is completely changed. You know, I have this child. I can't just go, 
you know, run to Target for like an errand even quick. You know, it has to be, everything has to be planned. Like, am I bringing my child? You know, mm-hmm. is someone here to my child? All those little things where you had the freedom to do whatever. And, you know, even for myself, I like to travel. I'm like, okay, I can't travel as much because I have to be home more. So all of that was kind of that identity evolution that it took, it took me a while before I kind of, you know, and I'm still getting hang of it. And he's 14 months, you know, I'm still (laughs) used to that where you're like, okay, like I have to, you know, even doing this interview with you, like I had to plan my, when is my son taken care of all those little things. And that's an evolution that, um, you know, we don't always discuss. And I think the more we can prepare women for this, I think the better it is going to be and the better moms that they're going to be. For the people that are listening that don't know what Ayurveda is, do you want to just give a quick? Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, it's kind of this, it means the science of life. And um, I practice certain aspects of it in my life. Um, Like early lighter dinners is something that I gravitate towards. So within it, they have tons of different, um, it can go into yoga, meditation, you know, what you're eating. Um, you know, what you do on a daily basis. And so I have gravitated towards, I call them my peaceful power practices, but certain aspects of it. So early lighter dinners is something I enjoy. I like to eat dinner before 6 p.m. ideally. And then by lighter, like soups, salads, just something that you can easily digest before you go to bed. Um, I like to do early to bed, early to rise, meaning going to bed, you know, before nine o'clock, Sometimes now, since it's lighter out a little bit later, 10 o'clock and then rising early. So trying to get up before 6 Mm -hmm. a.m., having mostly a plant based diet, eating according to the seasons Um, and then a meditation practice to start your day along with like 20 minutes of movement in the morning to start your morning um, off right. So those are some of the ones that I've kind of incorporated into my life on a daily basis, because I know sometimes for people it's easier to see, okay, what tangible things, you know, and takeaways. Yeah, yeah. And how, and how easy is having that routine now with a little Uh, guy? Well, I actually (laughs) adapted this routine after he was born. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, So I tried to get onto this, um, probably it would have been two and a half years ago. Now I was introduced to it and uh, at a yoga retreat in Costa Rica. And I'm like, Oh, this sounds cool, but no, I can't do it. There's just no way. And then I don't know why I just kept being pulled back to Ayurveda. It's just, it kept being thrown into my life. And so for whatever reason, after he was born, after I was kind of, you know, at a loss of who I was, I was like, okay, I, I need something. And, um, I decided to deep dive and study, you know, this Ayurveda course that I'm still almost completed now. Mm -hmm. And it was like a nine month deep dive into it. And, that literally kind of helped me pull me out because it gave me some routine. It gave me some structures to my day. And I think that's something that has helped me, you know, w- even with my son, like having that he has kind of a routine, kind of not like I'm not a strict routine person for yeah. him. But, you know, like having a little bit of ebb and flow in my own life really helped me kind of ground back down. Did you guys plan your son or was, uh, was no. he in hand? Okay. <laughs> so he was curious. My, Yeah, no, my husband and I, um, we just got married now two years ago. And so we're not, it's a little dicey on if we were pregnant during the wedding (laughs) or if I got pregnant in Sedona. So we honeymooned in Sedona. And I kid you not, I went to a yoga class in Sedona. You know, I, everywhere I travel, I just go to yoga classes because I love, you know, meeting different teachers Mm -hmm. and different styles. Yeah, me too. So I I went to a class. And I was, oh, isn't it? It's the best. So I'm in this class and it was an easier, like restorative class. And I was the youngest person in this class by probably 40, 50 years. And we're laying on our backs. We're doing probably 45 minutes, all just kind of on the ground. Well, we stand up and I am like, holy crap, I am going to pass out. Like, I am like nauseous. I have no idea what's going on. It's not like it was super hot in there. And I'm like, so I had to go sit down on this bench, like drink some water. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is odd. Like, I, I was just kind of like, this this is weird. So I went back to class after I kind of settled down. And, um, you know, afterwards, the instructor's like, oh, are you okay? You know, like, yeah, it's just really weird. And he's like, oh, maybe open a chakra. In my head, as soon as he said that, I'm like, or I'm pregnant. <laughs> and it was like, I knew, like, that was it. Like, I knew I was pregnant. As soon as I was like, chakra, nope, I'm pregnant. Like, I knew instantly. And turned out I was right. So, like, 
<laughs> it was kind of, cause I'm in tune with my body. And so I just kind of right. knew I'm like, something's off. And then that was it. And then I tried to do some workouts at home and I was like, okay, I'm getting lightheaded. I'm getting nauseous doing like more simple things. And I'm like, this is perplexing. And yep, I was. <laughs> wow. Okay. So he was, yeah. so what he wasn't planned. And so, but, no. but you guys were ready to have a, a, a child. Yeah. I mean, we, we wouldn't have it for another couple of years, but you know, Hey, Jalen was ready to come now. <laughs> yeah. He was like, mom, I'm coming and there's nothing you can do about it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think? I mean, we, we've talked about, you know, the, the whole process of after having a child, what do you think, uh, helped you prepare for, for this moment for being a mom? Or Gosh. maybe you weren't prepared. I have no idea. Mm, I would say I was not. I don't think I prepared myself whatsoever. Um, and for, I think, good and bad. Uh, on the good, like, I wasn't, like, my I didn't really have a birth plan. Like, I just went in, basically <laughs> told the nurse, I'm like, I want to do a natural birth. And um, she was like, okay. And she kind of quizzically, like, let me feel this girl out to see if she can handle that. And so she was like, I'm like, I practice yoga. I do some breathing. And she was like, oh, perfect. She's like, I'm actually, you know, she had delivered at lots of, and she had been a doula, this nurse had. And so she was like, I'm going to be your nurse then because a lot of the nurses won't at this hospital won't let you do a natural birth and they'll try to push drugs and epidural, you know, and my, I was really lucked out and I didn't have her. And so that was like literally my planning in a nutshell. That was the only oh. thing I planned. I didn't plan for after my son was born. That was my plan was have a natural birth. And as far as I thought, <laughs> And did, how did it go? Was it, uh, memorable? Uh, yep. <laughs> that it was. And I, I did have a natural birth. I, 22 hours of labor and, um, it was definitely intense. And I went in this little tub and again, see, this is where like listening to your intu intuition, especially during that process, yeah. they had this tub. And I remember in yoga class, my teacher had said, Make sure you don't get in the tub until you're um, dilated at least five or six centimeters. So in the back of my head, you know, this nurse was like, you should get in the tub now. It will help you dilate quicker. And I was only like a two centimeter dilate. And I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, my yoga teacher said not to. And in my head, I was like, I should wait. But I was, you know, I'm like, no, nope, she's the nurse. She knows. So I hop in and dilated super quick and then stalled for many, many hours. So again, listening to myself, I would have waited and it probably would have sped up labor a little bit uh, better if I would have waited and listened to my, my own intuition. Uh, then after that, you're basically kind of just waiting, waiting for stuff to happen, waiting for the contractions. And um, after my son was born, like that was the other kind of kicker in terms of the mental piece. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, I this instant bond, this instant connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I didn't really feel that instant bond or connection. You know, I was just so excited exhausted and um we didn't know if he was going to be a boy or a girl and uh um, oh, you, you, know, you wanted after, it to be a surprise we did oh and that's so, so cool. i i know and i kind of already knew because a nurse had accidentally told me like twice at our visits oh. oh he looks great he's doing good oh uh, oh but no 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 it's not a he i'm just saying i'm just saying he and i was like okay i already kind of am thinking mm -hmm, this is a boy mm -hmm. So I kind of knew and my husband was, you know, they were telling my husband, you know, tell her what it is. And, you know, he's like, it's a boy. And I just was like, ah. everyone's looking, at, you know, I just remember saying, smile, smile, you know, be happy. So like, that was kind of that awkward. Okay, now what, you know, like, I have no idea what to do with this child, you know, mm -hmm. he's on my chest. And I, you know, everyone's looking at you. And I just want to take a nap or like, you're not being so much exhausted. Pain. Yeah. Yes. And so like, that was kind of the first like, whoa, oh boy, you know, and thankfully I had a friend who kind of had warned me just like a little bit of some of that, um, you know, stuff that happens post birth. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had a little idea, but not a ton. I didn't do any necessarily reading because I didn't want to bombard myself or because sometimes if we get reading, we get stuck in. This yeah. Is the way or, or you put it in your subconscious or, and you may like perpetuate something that may not even be a thing. Yes. So I didn't want to do that. So that's kind of where I was like, I just want to kind of what, whatever happens, happens. And that's, that's what, what's, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, for the people listening, you tell us a little bit about what happened after you had Jalen. Yeah. So that's, 
when, um, when my family came over, um, my husband's family came, I had popped a ton of blood vessels in my face, which I didn't realize and, um, was looking kind of crazy. I left the robe on the whole time I was at the hospital. Like I didn't even think to like change out of that while I was there, you know, like just little things like that. Cause mm-hmm. I was just not quite all there. Um, very much a zombie. Like my, one of my best friends had came to visit and she had texted my other friends who were going to come, you know, thankfully, I'm so thankful she did this, but you know, at the time I really didn't care, but she was like, Oh, how about you guys wait to visit her when she's at home? You know? And so she kind of had seen, Oh, she needs, she needs some more time. Um, and so that was kind of the first, Whoa boy. Now we're at home, you know, now we got to take care of this child. Um, I tried to go to Kohl's like 10 days after he was born just to kind of get out of the house. And I remember parking and trying to walk in the store. And I was like, I cannot walk into the store. I had to grab a cart in the parking lot and like push it in Mm. to like walk in on it because I was so just like, everything is still sore and you're adjusting. And, you know, I'm like, I was this athlete. So I'm like, what is this? What is going on with my body? So it was just kind of a little eye opening um, and humbling at the same time to just be like, okay, a lot of stuff happened. Like, this is something you've never experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's intense. You know, I, I think it's something that people don't, well, anyway, I mean, for somebody like myself that doesn't have children yet, you know, um, even, even so with my girlfriends that have kids, like nobody ever really talks about how challenging it it can be to give birth or to have a child or to be a mom right? Totally. That's, um, and I think a lot of it is too, like having that safe space to do it because putting it out there, you're putting yourself out there to be judged. And so that one took me a little bit to even want to share any of the, you know, I didn't feel that bond, you know, and some of those feelings, cause people, you know, are like, Oh, you're a bad mom. And I was sharing with, um, one of my friends too. I'm like, Oh, I didn't know. Like you feel like they're going to come and take your child away. If you say, you know, something like that, mm-hmm. like you just are, you don't know. And I mean, how would you like you're in first time mom and, you know, talking to some of my clients, I actually did a podcast, um, like a solo one with myself and kind of mm-hmm. shared some of my story. And I had one of my clients was like, Oh, she's like, I tried to tell you, you know, some of this stuff, but until you go through it, like you really don't know. And not everyone has that experience, you know, like some women have those, um, you know, the hormones kick in and they feel rejuvenated and rejoiced. And, you know, it just really depends on what's going on with your body and your hormones and everyone's a little different. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, the, the nasty or the not so fun part of it doesn't always get shared because it is, it's kind of embarrassing. You're like, well, I didn't have that experience. And, you know, who do I share that with? Yeah. Yeah. And like who, and in a way that feels safe and not judged. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's, um, I have a, I have a friend who is very curious about parenting because she potentially wants to have a family, uh, at some point very soon. And my question to you, uh, again, this is a a close friend of mine, (laughs) very close friend. (laughs) Uh, her, her big fear is not being able to have freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is big for her because she loves to travel. She loves to be able to do things with her partner on a whim. She loves taking naps during the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, she likes to spontaneously go on a road trip and, you know, do things like that. But at the same time, she she knows that having a family is very important. So what would you say, what kind of advice would you give this friend of mine? Well, I would say I would, I would have been that person myself. And um, I guess what I would say first is to kind of adjust that evolution or just know that there will be an evolution. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know that, I guess, advice for anyone who likes their freedom or likes that, you know, to nap in the day or go on those road trips, um, just knowing that there will be a change and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be able to do those things. Yeah. Um, like I went at, when my son was six weeks old, like I went to, um, out to California for a mastermind event for four days. And so like 
that was something that I didn't, I asked a few people for advice on, you know, I'm like, should I go? He's going to only be six weeks old. Um, and most of everyone had said, yes, you know, you should go like, this is a great time to do it. And so a lot of it too, is trusting yourself and just knowing you'll know, like, you'll know if you can or can't do that. Um, and making time for that. Cause I know my husband and I, like we're going on, I mean, it's close to May now. And I was just thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, we've only been on one date this entire year where it was just us. <laughs> and, you know, like those are the things where if you don't plan, like they do slip away from you. Like another weekend comes and like at that point, you're like, yeah. okay, you need to find someone to watch your child. Like those are the ones where you have to do a little planning um, to make sure you can have that. You know, mm-hmm. if I wanted to go on a weekend, well, I I was just in California, you know, out there with you. Right. And I was gone again another 10 days. And my mom, you know, watched my son because my husband obviously wasn't going to take 10 days off work. But like those little bit of planning, and as long as you have that support system, I think that's the key is having that support or knowing who can help you out. So like my parents don't live, they live two hours away from us. So, um, you know, like that's a little bit of a drive. I know they're not going to necessarily be able to watch him like on a Saturday night for a date night. But, you know, my husband's parents live close enough. They might be able to, you know, we also have a nanny that comes in for a few hours a week and then that kind of helps out as well. So those are like the little, little things that you can add or have as a support system to help you kind of have a little bit of freedom. And then if you do need extra freedom, which is, I have found like going to a yoga class or, you know, just needing to take a little extra time for you, like scheduling that in there when you know you have you know, childcare. So like, if I need something done, I know Mondays are great, because I have my son is being watched by our nanny, and my husband, you know, is at work, I can take an extra hour if I need to like, work out, or if I just needed to sit at a coffee shop Mm -hmm. and just sit and stare, you know, like whatever you need. That's a little bit of freedom that you can build in. Because I have found if I don't do those things, that's when I can feel myself slipping back into like losing myself if I don't take time for me. Yeah, I really, you know, and another question is you said something really kind of that perked my ears, the whole asking for help. Mm-hmm. Prior to you having Jaden, did you, were you comfortable with asking people for help? Or is this something that you've found now is a new awareness that you have? Oh, yeah, I did not. Um, I still have trouble asking for help. Like, that is something that I am still a work in progress on. Um, because I grew up, I grew up on a farm and so in a small town now farm people, we do not like to ask for help. Like you do things you push on. And that's like, even when we're sick, like I remember my mom being like, like if we would lay down on the couch, like there was no napping on our farm. Like I have three younger brothers and they're all still farmers. And if we were on the couch, like just resting, my mom would be like, are you sick? What's wrong with you? (laughs) You know, like, there was, like, no, like, any of that. Right. Like, if you were, like, not doing something, you something was wrong with you. So, like, that's just kind of the mentality that I grew up in. So yeah. to ask for help is still quite difficult because you're showing a sign of weakness, which you don't want to do. Yeah. So that's, that's a, I don't know. I don't know how to get over that besides just trying to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I feel like we have similar temperaments with that, and I'm the same way, and I can just imagine – uh, my friend being in that position and maybe not, <laughs> not being able to ask for it. But I digress. Uh, obviously, we'll be in contact and I'll let you know how my friend does in the future. Um, I yes, do. Okay, yeah. Um, why do you think, just kind of going back to, you know, what you do in, in helping people and just kind of your mission in the world, what have you found has been the biggest the biggest topic that as yogis we need to focus on in our current climate? I think making the time for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's been the biggest one that I've seen. Um, And not being afraid to do that. So I think uh, in the terms of like anyone who's trying to, you know, take the even 20 minutes in the morning, um, do movement. Like that's just something that I was trying to have some, some of my clients do. And, you know, they're like, Oh, you know, the kids are up. I'm like, well, this is going to require you to get up probably before the kids. If you have kids, you know, and setting your alarm a little bit earlier, which means going to bed a little 
failure and setting those practices because what they are is they're deeply ingrained habits that we have. So we have to switch some of those mindsets that we have around. Well, I always stay up until 11 p.m., Mm -hmm. you know, or I always sleep in until eight, you know, whatever those are, we have to kind of reverse them if we need to make time for ourselves around life's obligations. Because I think right now, you know, even if people don't have kids, I have clients who are struggling to, you know, get home from work at a reasonable hour to take care of themselves, you know, and they're like, I don't have time to cook. I wish someone was just here making my meal for me. And, you know, those are little things where just, okay, how can we make this as easy as possible and take some time for you? Like, do you have to stay at work until seven? Or is there a way that you can maybe, you know, do some of that tomorrow? Like, how much is that that we perceive as we have to do that we actually really don't need to do that day. Mm. What is your most favorite thing to work on with your clients? Mm. Oh gosh. I would say I love to see, I work with primarily all women Mm -hmm. and, um, the evolution that I've seen, I guess in the last few years is a lot of women stepping up, And this has nothing to do with fitness whatsoever. This is kind of what's nice about my job is like, I don't always like, it's not always fitness. Like you're, if you're working with women at like on that level, like you get to know lots of things about them. And, um, lately there's a lot, a lot of women who have been leaving jobs that are no longer fulfilling them. And they're stepping into new careers, starting their own businesses, um, leaving relationships that are no longer fulfilling them. That has been a big one as well that I've seen the last few years. And a lot of the times this comes because they're starting to get the confidence from like a workout routine, from a yoga practice, you know, whatever they're doing with me, like that is something that I love to see is it transcends into other areas of your life. That's why I'm huge, huge um, proponent for fitting in, you know, a fitness based lifestyle, whatever that means to you in terms of the yoga, um, weightlifting, walking whatever that looks like, because it will go into other areas of your life. And that's where I like to see those um, changes. Wow, that's to be able to see transformation, really, right? Amazing. I mean, that's amazing. It's it's so it's such a beautiful space to be able to work in the health and wellness, you know, uh, space, because just to see people actually progress and to see them grow and to see them transform and to utilize all the different tools in whatever area of fitness that they choose to commit to or, or do just to be able to see people grow and to see them transform. I think that's, that's always been a, a, a beautiful thing. And and what drives me to be able to work with people one-on-one as well is to be able to see the progression, right? Yes. And I love doing that too with, clients who come to me maybe at first just for like, Oh, I just want to learn how to lift, you know, lift weights. And they're like, Oh, and eventually after maybe a few weeks and kind of getting to know me, they're like, well, you do yoga too. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm a yoga teacher. And they're like, Hmm, maybe I want to try some, this yoga that you talk about. Cause a lot of times they've never been to a class <laughs> yeah. uh, and they're embarrassed. They're like, I don't want to yeah. go to a class cause I don't know how to do these moves and they're going to talk in weird languages and, you know, and they're not going to show me what to do. And, I'm like, okay, that's totally great. Let's start one-on-one. And then eventually, a lot of the times they are like, I'm going to try a class now. Like I feel comfortable enough or confident enough to try a class. Right. And this is kind of where they learn the foundation. So I love it when people start, you know, opening new doors for them. And then now, since I've been really talking about Ayurveda, like clients are like, what is this early lighter dinner? <laughs> like telling me this has transformed like everything. I'm like, it's changed my body. Like yeah. So, so can you talk to us about that? Because you, you talked about it earlier and, and I know the benefits of that, but can you tell our listeners about the importance of that and, and why it's effective? Mm. So I am like, probably I am about 17 pounds lighter now since doing early lighter dinners than I was um, going into my pregnancy. And that's literally the only thing that's changed is doing the early lighter dinners. And one of the benefits is, is because your body actually digests the food. So when you go to bed at night, like you're not sitting there, your stomach's not trying to digest that that food. And a lot of times if we eat at eight or nine o'clock at night, you know, we are going to bed on a full stomach. And then in the middle of the night, like people, if they have like the heartburn or if they feel bloated or gassy, 
while they're in bed trying to sleep, like you're not getting a restful sleep either. And your body is trying to do all this work and it just can't because your body, I mean, you're laying there. So it's really not helpful for your body instead of moving. So that's where that kind of the um, early part comes into play. And then like the lighter dinners is just something easy to digest. Yeah. So that's where like the all winter long, I pretty much just did soups in the evening. And at first it took a little bit to get adjusted to for the lighter meals. Mm -hmm. But then now if I eat something heavier at night, like I feel so full and like I've adjusted kind of my routine and your stomach will adjust to this, which is something else that people sometimes have to give it a week or two before they're like, Oh yeah, I can feel the, you know, just how you feel the, ugh, Mm -hmm. the stomach fullness. Like that's what you'll get then after you kind of have gotten used to having that lighter dinner, whatever that might be. And so I always can tell, nope, this was not agreeing with me or with foods. Like you start noticing, oh, this, this food does not like cheese. For instance, I've just noted dairy and me do not get along anymore since having my son. And I would have never taken the time to notice like, oh, this does not feel well in my stomach. Like I don't usually feel these feelings, but it's only after dairy. And so taking the time to feel that as well, I think has been a tremendous gift as well from Ayurveda. Wow. Yeah. It's, I think that more people should really tune into their bodies and acknowledge those, those feelings or those reactions, because I think most of us can benefit from having a lighter dinner and, and just noticing how eating too late at night really affects your digestive fire. Right. So in Ayurveda is, is Agni, right? So yeah. it's like the Agni that's burning. Like it, if you basically like fan the flames, so there's just the flames are, you're almost putting them out because you're eating a heavy meal late at night and then you're going straight to bed, you know, so it can affect everything, your sleep cycle, your mood, your hormones, your energy, everything. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. And one of the things too, when you wake up in the morning, they have like the Agni, which is the undigested food on your tongue. So a lot of times, like I didn't notice that until I'm like, oh, you have this white stuff and the white gunk on your tongue. Mm. And that's like the undigested food. And that's why people do the tongue scraping mm-hmm, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something I also noticed. I felt like sick after having just a sip of water in the morning. And I had asked my, um, you know, my teacher, I was like, is this because I was having undigested like food essentially sitting in my gut, like, and that's why I'm feeling sick from having water first thing in the morning, which you're supposed to do and you shouldn't feel sick from. And she goes, yep, because I have not had that now since doing the lighter meals at night. Mm -hmm. And so those are little things, again, who knew, like, we don't know how bad we feel until we notice, oh, wow, this feels a lot different than I used to. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. What do you think has been the biggest lesson in your life? Mm. Oh my gosh. The biggest lesson in my life. Hmm. I think it might be something along the lines of, I guess, constantly evolving as a person. Mm. And it's happened a couple times because I think growing up, I was always the athlete because I was a three sport athlete in high school and in college. And after quitting, I quit basketball my, after my sophomore year of college. And that was my sport. That was me. I, my junior year, I have no idea how I came into this or why I did, but I picked up um, How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci and um, a Wayne Dyer book. And I was reading those that summer. And that's when I kind of really got into kind of the self-help back before it was cool. So you're like in the aisle, you're like sunglasses <laughs> on. Like, right, you know, right. Books. <laughs> totally. And so... Yeah. So I grabbed these books and, you know, as like a 21 year old kid, like, okay, like I have to figure out who I am because I just completely lost who I was because I was the basketball girl. Like Mm -hmm. I was so embarrassed to tell my parents, they didn't care. Like they were like this, do what, do what makes you happy. If you're not loving the sport anymore, um, you know, switch gears, but telling like my high school classmates, like, and all of the people around, like that was my first, like, Ooh, I really care. You know what all these people think. And um, that was my first kind of transition into the evolution of myself. And then now, since becoming a mom has been kind of the second, okay, it's kind of like we're doing it all over again, Um, which I kind of just realized as I was thinking about this question, I was like, yeah, this has kind of happened twice in my life, like those big moments. Um, 
And I think that would be the biggest lessons is just kind of constantly evolving and having the tools to do it. Mm. That's so good. That's so, I mean, we forget how important it is for us to even seek the wisdom of people that have written about it <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. or people in our lives that have taught us lessons. Uh, what area in your life do you feel the most free? Mm. I would say probably in my yoga practice, like that's literally what's coming up. And that is my like, usually hour and a half time for me when I get to go to a class because I'll do it at home but it's not quite the same when you have you know sleeping children that you're hoping don't wake up so you don't you can't quite get in that zone you're like hey is he gonna sleep but when I go to that class like that is like my freedom like I look forward to that every weekend I try to go to one if not two classes like that is my time to just be on my mat and just be be me wow I love that what uh, what advice would you give your 15-year-old self? Ooh. I would say keep doing you because that, as a 15-year-old kid, I was pretty, I wore like all pink, hot pink outfit to school, like bubblegum pink. And oh, I did love not it. Care. That's I wore amazing. my dad's corduroy pants to high school. <laughs> I did not care. Like, I really did not care what other people thought of me. So I would say just keep doing that. <laughs> just, it, it's working. So just continue yeah. to do what you're doing. Yeah. So great. Uh, what advice would your 60 year old self give you? I would say don't be so hard on yourself. Mm, I love that. That's so, I mean, you know what? <laughs> that, that's important, right? Uh, uh, sometimes when I th- when I think about questions like this you know and I, I reflect on them because for me those two ages are so paradoxical but also mm-hmm. there's there's still so much uh newness and ex- exploring and look I'm not I'm I'm kind of in the middle of the spectrum of both we both are right so it's like yep. it's interesting to just put yourself in a position to look back and see, okay, this teenager, you know, like what, what could I have said to myself then, you know, and I I, rarely do people answer that question with something that they regret not doing. It's always like, just continue to do what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. in the same essence, the 60 or just the older version of ourselves to, to give us now, essentially it's the same thing right? Mm-hmm. It's to just continue to stay on the path. Okay. So final question. Are you ready? I'm ready. So Radically Loved is uh, a forum that I created uh, for people to come to, to gain information, to get inspired, to understand mostly that yoga isn't just about yoga asana or just the forms, that it's mostly a lifestyle that Yoga means union, right? And this is a place where we can be and practice yoga in our connection to each other in our conversation. And Radically Loved is this idea that we are held by God, universe, source, whatever higher power of your understanding. Uh, We are radically loved. And the questions to you are, how do you feel radically loved and what do you radically love? I would say I feel radically loved every day because I think that God, that's the person that I would say I would call, um, is everywhere. It's all encompassing. It's in, you know, each of us. And so that's how I'd say I feel radically loved. And I would say I give radically loved um, or radical love by trying to put that onto the world, you know, what God is trying to channel through myself, trying Mm -hmm. to put that out every day and um, be that for people, you know, whatever that might be. And what do you radically love? I radically love, well, my, my child and my husband. (laughs) That's a good answer. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's what first comes to me. Every time I try to change during my, I have a little gratitude practice in the morning and every time that they always are right there. Um, so I would have to say that is going to be what I would say nine times out of 10. <laughs> wow. That's so great. Uh, where can we connect with you? Where, where would you be most easily found? Um, on my website, andreaclausen.com and then Instagram, andreaclausen21 is pretty much where I like to hang out. Okay. That's good. So we can totally stalk you in those places. Um, yeah. And my podcast. And I was just going to say, I'm like, wow, you're not even going to plug the podcast. podcast. Tell us a little bit about, tell us a a, a little bit about your podcast. So after people listen to this, they can go over and listen to more of what you're offering out into the world. Yes. Um, I actually interviewed Rosie. Oh, (laughs) oh, me? Yes. (laughs) And so I just did that. Um, My (laughs) podcast is really, it's kind of conversational as well. Yeah. And it's, you know, fitness, yoga, Ayurveda. Um, and then I also do some solo shows and I'm going to, I think in the summer, I'm going to get back to doing an interview and then a solo show bi-weekly. Okay. Um, and so I really love to do some solo shows and get on there and chat with myself. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so about whatever topics are coming up and whatever people have asked me about. And so that's where I kind of share that. Um, and yeah, my guests are amazing and they're women primarily women, I do have a couple of men um, who are doing stuff and just putting their light into this world. Oh, I love that. And it's such a great podcast. And I, I, I was on there and I, I had the honor and the privilege of, of being a guest of yours. And it was so much fun. And I hope that when people are done listening to this, they'll tune over to your podcast and learn all about everything that you're doing and peaceful power practices. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm so grateful for you. I'm like, I don't even want to, I'm like, can we just continue to just have this chat? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not actually done asking you questions, but I'm like, can we just uh, continue? No, I mean, it's, it's time to wrap, but yeah, I, I love this. Um, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And, um, I admire what you're doing and how you're helping moms and women and empowering women out in the world through fitness, yoga, and Ayurveda. And I just am so grateful for you and I'm happy to know you. And I I pray that our paths continue to align and that we continue to stay connected. Yes, I totally agree. And I feel like our souls have like met in a past life. Like, that's what I thought after I interviewed for my podcast. I, like, <laughs> I, I know. feel like I know this woman and I just met her. <laughs> I I know. It feels like it's just like we're just girlfriends having a good time. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. And everyone, thanks for listening. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us. Message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes. Write a review. We love doing this. So please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.